Hey guys, back again and we got something uh, cool we wanted to share with you. Um, I haven't opened it yet, but uh, let's get started. And then we'll talk about this. This is not mine. A uh, good buddy of mine, Rodney, uh, loaned this to me so we could open it uh, in the video and share it with everyone. Let me get in here. Looks a little dinged up here on the corners, but I think it'll be all right. Let's see. Ah, uh, there we go. So this is uh, the 64, or the C64. Okay, so um, I know that you know a lot of people have been getting these lately, and there's some videos out with reviews but I don't plan on reviewing it really I'm just gonna go over it I'm curious as to you know how it looks how it feels um, you know things like that so let's uh, let's get in here and get this out and we'll see what it looks like all right you can okay so it's boxed you know very nice and professional of course you would expect it from a retail product well, look at that. It is pretty on um, first look. It is very, very nice. The keyboard feels good. Very good color. <clears throat> I'm going to move this out of the way. So we can look at just the computer for right now. So... If you look at it, first thing you notice is absence of any ports on the back, which, uh, you know, according to announcements and things like that from the people, we didn't expect anything like that. You got your uh, power, HDMI, and a USB port there. Uh, three USB ports on the side, and a power button. Now, if you look on the bottom here, you do see that there are the you know, regular screw holes, just like you would have in a normal 64, which is going to just beg me to open this thing up. So Rodney, I'm gonna open this puppy up. Haven't even plugged it in, I wanna see what it's inside of it. That's the kind of stuff I'm curious about. So, Let's see. Now I haven't watched anybody else's videos, so I don't know what they've done with these and, and such as far as looking at them. But let's see. Let me look here. Wow, you know, the inside of this thing is actually made very similar to a normal 64. I mean, you got your little daughter board here and if you see your uh, bottom of your keyboard it looks very similar to a you know a real 64 they got the LED uh, hot glued in there so getting it well, we could take it apart some more if we wanted to um, you know I, I know people were curious to know if this case could be used as a replacement for uh, you know, original equipment. And uh, I would say you probably can, but not with, without having to do a lot of modification in there. So I don't know if it'd be worth it or not. Uh, now the other question everybody has is, what about the keys on these things? Hmm, I don't know. Rodney, you think I should pop one of the keys off your keyboard? <laughs> I don't know if Rodney would like that. Let's see. Uh... You know what? Let's go ahead and look at this thing. All right, I'm going to take the keyboard off so we can look at it. Be right back. All right, so we got the screws undone. We'll take the keyboard out. Set it right here. And like I said, I've never been in one of these before at all. The keyboard's quite heavy. 
Got a pretty good uh, metal plate right here. I'm curious as to how these keys snap on here and what they look like. Now they're just regular square type keys. Um, looks to me like they're painted because you see the brown around here. Not exactly sure. But, you know, it's a good looking key. It's pretty light compared to original keys. Uh, it's got the same angle and feel to the keys as a regular keyboard. It's a lot of travel. Doesn't feel bad. But, you know, for anybody wanting to know, can you use the keycaps? Yeah, uh, not without some type of adapter. Uh, you know, a 3D printed adapter, maybe. I don't even know if it'll work then because they have to be circular to fit in their original. So, no, I'd say, i say your chances of getting these to work in an original, no, it's not going to happen. So, let me pop this back in here. Okay, so... I'm guessing that all this is is the uh, this is all just for the keyboard so all this big case for this I've never opened them <laughs> so I'm guessing you know this is the whole little um, emulator board here uh, we can take it off and look and see what it looks like on the other side it's only four little screws here I did get a mini, uh, but I gave it to my son, uh, not the son that's filming, but my other son. And, uh, you know, I don't know if he, he plays it very much, but you know, it's, it's fun. So here we go. Yeah, so that's your whole, your whole board there. Got a couple extra USB. Um, places you could put it there. Interesting stuff. It's amazing that you can do all that that we used to do with those big circuit boards on this little one. I mean, I know that's no big deal. We got cell phones and everything, but still, when you mess with full-size uh, original Commodores all the time and, you know, you mess with something like this, it's... Uh, it's a little different. Okay, so we're gonna put that back. Rodney, I'm sorry for the heart attack if I'm giving you one by taking all this stuff apart. And you can see it, it clips, it clips pretty much like an original case. It's not, um, not much different from that. The plastic is definitely you know, a different style of plastic. I wouldn't expect them to be using the same type of stuff. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just kind of, you know, comparing how it looks, how it feels to an original. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna get this all back together. Um, you know, we got to look at the guts, which is, that's the fun part for me. So uh, I'll get it back together and we'll plug this thing up and see what she can do. All right, so we got it over here at my monitor here because it, this one will work in uh, PAL or NTSC. Um, got your little power adapter here for your USB power supply. <clears throat> I don't know if it's going to be long enough to reach down there. I'll have to plug it in back here. How many amps is this thing? Man, they wrote that small. Don't I know old folks are buying these things? Can you see what the amps are on that power supply?
No, just tell me. Do you see it? I can't see. Okay. Well, I don't know. We'll look at that later. I'll put it underneath my magnifying glass over there. I see five volts. One amp. Okay, one amp. Cool. All right, so we don't need to even plug it in here. I can plug it into this little uh, power supply adapter I have over here. But you got the wall adapter here, so you can use that too. I'm just trying to keep all this junk off of my space. All right. HDMI cable. gigantic joystick here. Oops. Let me get off of this. There we go. Okay. So, I'm sure it's just going to operate like the Mini did. Pretty much. Alright, so we're all hooked up. I'm going to change over to my HDMI input here. All right, now let's fire it up, see what we get. Navigate through the selection of games. It's just like the mini. Pick them out, click the button, and you're good to go. Got a little information about all the games. Uh, you've seen all this before. Summer Games 2, that was one of my favorite ones. World Games, Winter Games. I loved all those. <clears throat> and of course you can uh, load your stuff in here cool so you can pick your uh, output very cool see what this does English okay new language setting and here's your setting settings oh you can choose which one you want so that's cool you got big 20 on here too cool all right boot mode let's see what this does oh so you can go straight into here very cool. Let's go into here so we can uh, system information. Cool. Switch to classic mode. And so here we are. Very nice, very pretty. I was wondering how it would do that. So you got a blank D64, but it's only read only. Boo! It would be cool if, uh, oh, it it did that. It saved it as a the zero as the first one. So we'll get rid of that. Okay. cool but we can't save it 
Oh, then I just got the 664 down there. Okay, so. <clears throat> it feels pretty good. I mean, it feels like you're using a, a real 64. Ah, and it did. So, um... Eh, I didn't save it. It says it did. I wonder where, why it said it was saving it, or if it saved it somewhere else. I mean, I don't know. I'd have. To, I'm gonna have to dig into it more. That would be cool if we could uh, save programs on here. Let you write, because I like to write little demos and stuff. I wonder about. Uh, So that's pretty cool. Huh. I'd be curious as to uh, what kind of programming you can do with it. Um, and that's something that I'm um, you know, fixing to look into here in just a second. Uh, see about uh, saving a program if you write one and how much of uh, actual writing can you do. Can you make a sprite come on the screen? Um, things like that. That's that's kind of what I'm curious with. So I'm going to check that out and we'll be back. Okay, so I got everything figured out. That took, didn't take but like 10 minutes. Like I said, um, I haven't done a lot with the Mini before, so the uh, file system and everything I had to figure it out, but it didn't take long. Uh, only one thing I've noticed so far is if you're a Commodore, real Commodore guy like me, um, and you use a lot of SD card devices, that's where all my D64s are. So I have this USB adapter to stick the, the SD in, and as you can see, it bumps into the HDMI. It would be, it'd be nice if it was, you know, over the other way, but I mean, you know, they can't account for everything. But, you know, it is kind of a, a, a bummer there because, you know, all my real Commodore equipment, if I use something that needs an SD, you know, it's easy to, to access. But anyway, so I put it in here, and I also loaded a uh, blank D64 on here so we could um, check it out, load it up, and um, you know see, see what it does. Um, let it boot back up here. And I've got it where it goes straight to the Commodore Basic screen, just because. <laughs> so, um, everybody knows about the mini and everything. Uh, get to the uh, media access on here. I don't know if it's the same for the Mini, I would assume it is. Okay, this is my SD card. It's got all my junk from my regular 64s. Um, uh, here, here's all my D64s, my programs. Um, and so what you'll do, what I'm gonna do first, because um, everybody knows how to play a game on these things. I'm gonna load my uh, blank D64 right here. And now we're gonna go back to the main screen and we can access that D64 with your normal um, list command to pull up the directory. Oh, not list, goodness gracious. I was thinking one step ahead. So that's another D64, it's got some uh, bulletin board stuff on it, um, which is fine. Let me go uh, load the other one. I've got so many weird things on here let's see it might be this way one more there it is right there Commodore forever that's what I did it. okay so that one's blank yes I got one little test program on there and I did find out you can uh, format this thing just like you would a normal um, floppy disk This one, VC64, uh, 2019. There. Okay, and so it did it. So there you go. 
So we formatted our virtual floppy. See, I don't mess with Vice and all that stuff. I, I know some of you guys are like, oh, that's no, nothing new. It's new to me because I don't ever use emulators. So. Okay, so that's cool. And then, of course, I, I already figured out you can uh, save a program to that. So that's cool. I mean, it's cool that you can uh, write a little program, save it on a floppy. Uh, and if we go back here, you can see that um, that you can. Uh, it has a cartridge slot also for loading a cartridge. Uh, it also lets you uh, load in a uh, a tape file like a cassette deck. Um, it, very cool. I mean, very cool stuff. Um, I, you know, I don't know what else we can do. I got, I know we can play um, games. <laughs> Let's see. We can, uh, oh, that would be interesting. Let's load up a term program just for the heck of it. All right, I got it loaded in. Go back out. So it's loading up a term program, maybe. I don't know if it actually will. Oh yeah, it did, cool, 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 cool. Let's see. Uh... Cool. Now if we could just uh, want to go into terminal mode, it just craps out. I guess it's looking for, you know, stuff that this thing doesn't understand, which is completely fine. But it's pretty cool that it, uh, that's pretty cool that you can do that type of thing. Um, let's see what else we got here. Let's just load in a. Well, you can just eject it. That's cool. Let's see what else we got here. Got some Star Wars stuff up here. Yeah, make you have seizures. Yeah, I don't think it's supposed to do that. It probably is supposed to do that. It was like uh, some type of loader thing or something, but whatever. Looks like a disco or something. A lot of them used to do that back in the day. Back in my day. Yeah, see, it's, it's been cracked, so that's why they did that. I don't have any sound on this monitor, unfortunately. May the force be with you. But this is, I mean, um, I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing so far because, uh, you know, it's um, it's an emulator with a Commodore keyboard. And since you can load a uh, blank D64 in there and, uh, you know, run stuff, pretty much everything that I write on my real 64 pop in here and... Uh, run it you know it's it's a uh, it's very cool i have nothing negative to say about it whatsoever um of course you know some people could say uh you know it'd be cool if they had a tape port and a and a serial port and a cartridge port and all that stuff on the back 
but you know that's not what it's meant to be if you if you want the cartridge ports and all that stuff there's other options out there um this is a pretty pretty unique option uh given the fact that it's you know it's got a nice case a nice keyboard um you know you got other uh replacement motherboards like the ultimate 64 and stuff and but you have to put it in an old case we're well, not an old case because you can get new cases um but you have to utilize uh some of the older stuff this is kind of a all-in-one unit you know it's, it's a pretty cool starting point a pretty solid starting point point i think in the fact that i mean you can play your games but then you can do other things also given the fact that you can browse through a usb um of stick and and save to the blank d64 uh i don't believe it has any support for uh for like a d81 um i don't see i haven't tried i don't know if anybody else has tried um we could try that real quick i don't know if it it will do it but it, i guess it wouldn't hurt to look and see huh so, um, hold on a second, I'm going to grab another SD card that's got a D81 on it, and we'll see what it does. Okay, so I got my other SD card in here, and we're going to pull it up. Um, there's another Star Wars. That's a D64. This Ultima Gold, I know it's a D81. It, it, it's got it here, so let's see if it actually did take it, because if it did, that would be really cool. So let's see. Uh, it's reading it. So it does read D81s. So that is very cool. So let's um let's load up Ultima here. Oh, it'd be so cool if I had the sound of it. <laughs> I wasn't intending on playing games or anything. So this is a cracked version of Ultimate. As you can see, this is a D81. So, um, and see right here, it says 1581. You see that? NTSC 664, uh, 1581. Now it's kind of locked up right now. So it didn't work all the way, unfortunately. But it actually did load the first part of it. So will it work on a D81 completely? I don't know. I don't know why, you know, why it's locked up here now after it loaded in the first part of it. It seems like it would do it. Uh, you might have to mess around to um, find some D81s that will work, but just the fact that it um, took it in is pretty cool. I'm sure there's a faster way to reset than I, what I did. But anyway, Let's see if it kept it in there. Okay, it did keep it in there. So that's cool. We'll try it one more time. Just for the heck of it, right? I mean, it's loading this part off of the D81. So that's really cool. But it won't go past that. So anyway, that's just one. And the fact that it's, you know, it does mess with it. So that means you could, you know, probably load in a blank D81 and access that. I think that's what I'll try next. And then uh, we'll wrap it up. Okay, so I'm going to load up the uh, D81. If I can remember where I put it, here it is. Blank D81. I don't think it was completely broke white, so we're gonna format it real quick. Yeah, so that's cool. Very cool. So it, it, it'll handle it. I guess that Ultima might have just had a loader since it was a cracked version. 
some kind of loader that was uh, messing with it. So I don't know how it's going to work, you know, loading the uh, multiple disc that are on one D81. So uh, it'll be fun to play around with and see. So um, anyway, um, it does a lot of cool stuff, no doubt about it. I'm, I'm more impressed with it than I thought I would be, actually. Um, so I have no problem with that. It's fun. Uh, so you can do more with it than just play games, which is awesome. <laughs> because, I mean, I, I like to play games. I have no problem with that. But also, I like to, uh, you know, do some programming and things like that. So That's my Christmas demo I did on my Commodore last year. It plays music, but... I don't have any sound hooked up. I wish I did. But this monitor doesn't have have any sound, unfortunately. We could hook it up to the big TV up there. And uh, we'll do that so we can uh, we can see this. But uh, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's do that so we can hear what the, the sound sounds like real quick. We'll hook it up to the big TV and we'll listen to some of these... Uh, Christmas songs on here and we'll see see how it compares, how it sounds and uh, that'll probably be about it for this video alright, be right okay, back so we got it hooked up to the TV so we can get some sound here pretty cool Sounds good. Uh, awesome. So that's cool. Very cool. It actually loads really quick. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm way more impressed than I thought I would be because I'm not an emulator guy. Uh, I didn't care for the mini very much. Uh, you know, I did buy one. I, you know, I'm gonna put money into anything that helps support any type of Commodore projects. But uh, I will say I'm, I'm way more impressed with this. I love the fact that it's got a keyboard. I love the fact that you can go in here and write some programs and save it to a, uh, you know, a virtual disk. Uh, the fact that it will you know, mess with D81s is awesome. Uh, since it does D81, I'm sure it does D71s. Not sure, I haven't messed with it, uh, you know, uh, D81 is what I use mostly uh, like I said for my multi-disc games so uh, much more than just a game console that's for sure uh, I'd say you know I don't use Vice a lot I've never messed with it much at all um, so I can't compare the way this you know emulates as opposed to Vice or whatever but it's really really cool <laughs> I, and I do like it the guys the guys that built this thing they did a wonderful job they make it look and feel a lot like a Commodore 64 um, so when you have this sitting on your desk you know sitting over here with your uh, with your regular Commodores and things like that it fits in it looks good guys I mean um, I'm, not, I'm not really doing a you know this isn't a, meant to be a review it's just my impressions on it because I'm pretty hard to uh, impress when it comes to uh, non-original equipment. And uh, these guys, they did a good job. They impressed me. Um, it's a beautiful machine. Uh, I love the way um, that it handles the menu system. Uh, if I was going to knock anything, it's really uh, the joystick. I, you know, it's, uh, it's a little clumsy. Um, I don't know if you can op operate the menu system on the keyboard yet. I haven't tried. Um, it, I guess it, you know it's, it's possible. And that's something you know if you guys watching, that might be something. I'm gonna press the function keys just to see before we end the video. Um, OK, 
Okay. So if we push the function keys, no, it changes it. Look at that. That's very cool. Um, no, I don't guess it does. I don't guess you can do it with this. But I mean, you know, that's fine. There's, it's not difficult to do. It's very simple. Um, awesome, awesome machine. Should you get one? Heck yeah, get one. <laughs> you know, I think it'll, it'd be a really cool system to save. You know, uh, wear and tear on your floppy disk, things like that. If you want to play some games, um, how does it compare to an original playing games? Eh, it's not exactly the same. The graphics aren't exactly the same. It's close, pretty dang close. Oh, okay, here we go. Um, so, yeah, it's nice. It's really nice. Uh, I can't say enough positive things about it. Everybody did a great job that was involved in this thing. Um, you know, I'm going to get one myself. Rodney, I may keep this one for myself. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, you know, thank, thank you, Rodney, for, you know, letting me use this and uh, check it out. So, um Anyway, give it a shot. Uh, you know, I don't think you'll be disappointed in this. It's a really cool machine.